Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Learning Channel. In the first video dealing with camera effects in action, we looked at the workflow of applying these in-camera post-processing effects. We took a plain-looking multi-layered 3D composite and added camera effects to create a much more polished look that included depth of field and look development. All of this was achieved solely within the action environment. We also looked at how CameraFX uses action render passes to take advantage of the 3D environment when creating post-processing effects. This also included using GMOSCs to constrain as well as control the intensity of the camera effects within the active composite. In this video, you'll see how CameraFX works with all types of objects in the 3D composite. This includes 3D geometry as well as 2D image objects. You will also see how Autodesk Stingray gaming technology has been incorporated into a few new Matchbox shaders. This gives you more choices for your post-processing effects and they are incredibly fast. So here we have a 3D composite that you may have seen in one of the other videos. If I scrub through the time bar, you can see we have a 3D vehicle, a 3D title and the surface as well as the earth are still 2D images. We also finish off the animation with a lens flare peeking out. Now if you switch to Orbit mode in the Tools menu or press the O keyboard shortcut, you can start moving around the 3D environment and you can clearly make out how the 3D scene was constructed. I'll just undo any changes to the camera. Switching to the 2-up view and looking at the action schematic, we have some geometry, lights casting shadows and a lens flare which has been customised with Matchbox shaders. There are no post-processing effects currently being applied. So pan over and select the 3D camera node in the scene. In case you're wondering, the red line connected into the camera is a look at function so that the earth layer always looks towards the camera. It is not a camera effects post-processing effect. Now switch to the action node bin and choose the Matchbox tab. If you press S, you will bring all the nodes starting with S including the Stingray Matchbox shaders. There are currently six available and we'll apply each one to see what they do. Let's start off by dragging out the Stingray Ambient Occlusion into the action schematic. The Matchbox camera effects is using the Z Depth HQ and Normals render passes to apply ambient occlusion as a post process. Double clicking on the Stingray Ambient Occlusion node brings up its controls and you can adjust the intensity of the soft shadows created by indirect light. I'll set the intensity to 0.3. When you scrub the time bar, Everything is pushed over to the GPU pipeline, which keeps Flame fast and interactive. So that's ambient occlusion done. Let's add in another Stingray camera effect shader. Select the camera in the schematic and go back to the action node bin. In the group of Stingray shaders, drag out the motion blur shader. Now this applies motion blur onto the composite, which you should see in the live preview result view. Scrub the time bar to the middle of the composite. It's very subtle, so double click on the node and increase the exposure time to about 3. That looks much better. Now most people normally cringe when they turn on motion blur because of the intensity of the process. Since the Stingray gaming technology was written for quality and performance, you have the similar performances in action. Scrubbing the time bar, you can see that even with ambient occlusion and motion blur, you are able to carry on working as normal and you are actually looking at the final result. Now one other property that is missing from this 3D composite is reflections. In previous versions of the Flame products, you would have to fake it with some clever techniques. So if you wanted the 3D objects to reflect on the ground and in each other, that would have been seriously tricky. The Stingray Matchbox shaders now offer a viable solution as a post-processing camera effects. Select the camera in the schematic and switch to the action node bin. Looking at the Stingray Matchbox shaders, you should see Stingray Reflections. Drag that out and add it to the camera effects pipeline. 
Every surface in the 3D composite is now reflective. If you switch to orbit and start moving the camera, you can see how the reflections are cast onto the 3D objects and respecting the information from the 3D environment. Obviously, the lunar surface is not that reflective, but I'm trying to make an obvious point. Even the 3D text is being reflected in the nose of the vehicle. So we have lights casting shadows, ambient occlusion, motion blur and reflection all happening within the 3D composite at the same time. Now, I did mention that all the objects are reflective as a result of the post-process. Because of this pipeline, you can't dictate which objects will be reflective or not. However, to help with this issue, you have access to the selectives to define what areas within the composite will have reflective properties. Double-click on the Stingray Reflections node for its controls. Here you will see that you can set a casting selective and a receiving selective. For this example, we'll use the receiving selective. In other words, this will determine what areas of 3D information will have reflective properties. By default, it is set to none. If you enable selective viewing, you can see the overlay is a flat color, meaning everything has the same reflective value. Now you could switch this to distance and adjust the linear amount. This applies reflectivity based on the distance or z-depth render pass. But I want the ground surface to be the most reflective. So as an alternative selective type you could use is normals. This allows you to base the reflectivity of objects based on their normals. So pulling the color wheel into the red values will align the selective to the normals of the floor which is at a 90 degree angle from the camera. Turn off the selective viewing and look at the result. Now it might not look any different from what was there earlier, but if you toggle between none and normals as the selective type, you can see how the vehicle is less reflective than the ground using normals. So it's really handy for all types of work to be able to use reflections directly in the action composite. Now, one issue I'd like to draw your attention to is that we have motion blur as a camera effects, but it's not being applied to the reflections when it should. This is due to the order of the camera effects pipeline. Swipe down to the priority editor. The reflections are being applied after the motion blur because of the order in which they are originally added to the composite. So if you drag the motion blur camera effects above the reflections, you will get the desired result. So that works quite well. Switch back from the priority editor and select the camera in the schematic. Going back to the action node bin, there are a few more Stingray matchbox shaders to look at. Let's add the Stingray depth of field shader. So depth of field has been added to the composite on top of everything else. Now you can go into the node and start tweaking a whole variety of settings. While I'm doing this, I want to reiterate that this is not the only way to do depth of field. In the previous video, we created depth of field using a blur 3D selective shader instead. There are lots of choices to get the result you want. So after disabling the viewing overlay, you can see the depth of field applied within the range of the camera's frustrum. Toggling the H keyboard shortcut hides the selected node, allowing you to see a before and after using this selected camera effects. Now let's say after all that you've done, your client tells you that they want the text to pop or glow. So select the camera node and head back to the action node bin. Amongst the Stingray matchbox shaders, you will find Stingray Bloom. When you add that to the camera effects pipeline, by default, everything starts glowing or blooming. To isolate this, we'll use the selectives. Double click on the node for its controls and switch to selective. This time, we'll use a virtual 3D cube to define an area in the 3D composite to apply the camera effects. Change the selective type to Cube World and enable the selective viewing. Whatever falls within this virtual cube in 3D space will have the specific camera effects applied to it. As a side note, 
you may have seen Cube World and Cube Cam. Cube World means that even when the camera moves, the cube stays locked in its position in 3D space. Cube Cam, on the other hand, moves in relation to the camera. They all have their different applications, and we're using Cube World for this example. Using the X, Y, and Z position sliders, you can position the cube over the 3D title. There are also secondary controls to adjust the cube's physical properties when trying to fit the selective if needed. Once you are happy with the overlay positioning, switch off selective viewing. Toggling the H keyboard shortcut, you can see how the blooming post process is only applied to the 3D title. You can now switch back to the controls and adjust the intensity of the bloom to meet your client's request. Finally, the last Stingray Shader node is a Lens Effects tool. Select the camera and go back to the Action node bin. Searching the Stingray Shader nodes, you will find Stingray Lens Effects. When you first apply it to the camera in the Action Schematic, nothing happens. So double-click on the node for its controls. Here you will find three controls. Adjusting the distortion slider will introduce lens distortion on top of the action result. There is also fringe intensity and fringe color, which adds additional color distortions using this camera effects. So those are the six Stingray Matchbox shaders included with the Flame 2017 products. And as a reminder, where applicable, you can use selectives and GMOSC inputs to limit and control these shaders just like the other Matchbox shaders. Finally, we've come quite a long way with the post-processing on this composite, so let's look at a before and after. Select the Live Preview Result view and toggle 3 for the 3D view. So that's what we have without any post-processing effects. And this is what we get with the Camera Effects Pipeline in action. Great results with enhanced performance. Be sure to check out the other videos covering the features, workflows and updates to the Flame 2017 products. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos.